Welcome back my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube. My name is Nimble Thor and today we're going to be checking out the three most interesting mobile games I played last week. And in today's episode, that includes one of the absolute best 2D fighting games I've ever played on mobile, so I'm really looking forward to sharing that one with you guys, and a toony idle incremental RPG, and then lastly, a retro action and management boxing game. Now, if you enjoy these videos, please do me the favor of leaving a like, and with that said, let's dive into the first game this week, Skullgirls, which is an incredibly well-made 2D fighting game, and it's also a spin-off of the popular PC and console game by the same name. So when you first start playing Skullgirls, we're thrown into this level-based story mode where we start fighting using our first two fighters, while then gradually unlocking way more fighters, there's so many in this game, and also unlocking special skills by opening relics that we get through gameplay. Now the combat system is fast paced and it relies on tap and swipe controls to trigger various attack skills that are unique to each fighter. And then to spice it up, we can even switch between fighters during combat to activate special abilities, which just makes it all the more fun. In fact, you'll be switching very often between characters in this game to trigger these abilities. Each of our fighters can be customized through a skill tree and we can also level them up faster than through combat by sacrificing other fighters. And over time, we then also unlock additional game modes, including, and this is where it gets interesting, a competitive real-time PvP mode, where both players start with the same fighters, the same skills and the same levels to make the matches completely fair, which is really freaking awesome because it's so rare to see this on mobile. From its polished and wacky art style to the humorous universe and the original characters, everything about Skullgirls just oozes with quality and I'm really enjoying it. Combined with the unique and over-the-top animations, this is what truly sets the game apart from all the other mobile fighting games. But the big question then of course is, how does this game monetize? And the answer is that we have in-app purchases for a premium currency that we use to instantly unlock fighters and new skills through the Relic Gacha mechanic. So can you pay to get stronger in this game? Yes, you absolutely can, but thanks to the competitive PvP mode, both PvE and PvP can easily be played and enjoyed without spending any money on the game. The only limiting factor really is that each individual fighter has an energy bar that takes one hour to replenish once we've fully depleted it. But since we have plenty of fighters to pick from, there's always another one we can just switch to. The game requires online access, takes up one gigabyte of space, and if you like fighting games but haven't tried this one yet, it's definitely worth taking for a spin. Another game I really enjoyed playing this week is called Hero Factory, and I just really enjoyed the theme of this game, it's so interesting. It's a toony idle incremental game. So, so far so good, we have plenty of those games in mobile. But in this one, we build factory assembly lines that continuously produce heroes that then run out and defeat endless waves of enemies and raid bosses. So all of the heroes that our factory produces basically start attacking automatically. We don't have to do anything, but to deal with the increasingly more powerful monsters though, we do need to grow stronger and we do this by upgrading each hero's assembly line and unlocking or upgrading gear for each hero. Upgrading the assembly line requires gold, which we gain from killing monsters, whereas gear is upgraded using enhancement stones that we get one off every 90 seconds. So that's another idle element of the game. You can leave the game, you can come back a few minutes later, combine some of them and then add them to your hero's gear to grow stronger. The game is almost exclusively PvE focused by the way, but we do also have an optional AI PvP mode where our heroes fight against a computer controlling other players' heroes. Super boring, but it's there if you do <laughs> want to get into it and you can get some nice rewards by the way, so it's sort of an, an end game thing. Just wait till you have super strong heroes go in there and reap the rewards. When our progress in this game eventually slows to a halt, and it will do that, just like in any other idle game, we can go on vacation, of course, <laughs> to reset our assembly lines and to earn medals used to buy permanent power ups that allow us to progress faster the next time. Thankfully though, we do get to keep our equipment and our abilities when resetting, so we're not starting completely from scratch. Although Hero Factory isn't as deep as some of the other idle games I've covered here on the channel, not yet at least, the art style and the monster designs are really humorous and progression is nicely paced. Hero Factory monetizes through in-app purchases for loot boxes that include gear, a premium currency that we also get plenty of for free, and a 599 season pass for the AI PvP mode, and then a few other items that let us progress faster. But there's also an incredibly large amount of let's call them opportunities to watch incentivized video advertisements in this game, which can thankfully all be removed through a one-time $16.99 in-app purchase. And although, yes, paying $17 for a free mobile game is very expensive, it might actually be a great option for those who end up falling in love with the game, because then at least you don't have to live with the incentivized video advertisements anymore. The game can be played offline, it takes up 440 megabytes of space, and if you can live with the incentivized ads or you don't mind paying to remove them, it's a neat little casual incremental game that is worth 
worth considering checking out. And then for a follow-up to the popular indie boxing game Prize Fighters, because Prize Fighters 2 released relatively recently, and it's this retro-inspired action and management boxing game where we train and fight our way to the top of the ranks in the career and the promoter game modes. So in the career mode, which I would argue is the main game mode of this game, we initially customize our new boxer, and then we start fighting opponents in three-minute matches to earn gold and progress in our career. During all the in-game weeks between matches, though, we can spend gold on exercising to train stats or recover energy, health, and stamina, and we basically continue like this until we find the next challenger. And then eventually our boxer will hopefully have reached the top of the ranks or retired from old age and we can start a new career with a different character with a different boxing style with different stats and basically just repeat that gameplay experience. Unlike this career mode though, the promoter mode lets us fully customize and control the league we're in, including booking fights for each of the boxers. So while the game is fun as a casual experience where you can play just the normal career mode, there's a lot to dive into for those looking for a long-term gameplay experience as well, and especially with this promoter game mode. The customizable controls worked very well in my opinion, making it easy to land jabs or punches or dodge incoming attacks, which are some words I've learned that are associated with boxing. <laughs> I basically know nothing about boxing, but here we go. The game is still fun, by the way, for someone who doesn't know boxing, so don't worry. Specific combinations of moves can even deal extra damage, and we can also unlock new skills and abilities for our boxers over time as they progress in their career. Prize Fighters 2 is a free game and there are no ads in it whatsoever, so the only way it monetizes really is through a $2.99 in a purchase that unlocks the full premium version of the game, which includes the promoter game mode, more customization options for leaks, and a feature that lets us import and export leaks and fighters created by other players. And that's where it gets really awesome, because it means we can jump onto this game's Discord or Reddit communities, and then we can go fight these fighters, download them, import them, and use them in our own leaks and in our own game. How awesome is that? The game can be played offline, it only takes up 81 megabyte of space, and if you're a fan of boxing games, it provides a really enjoyable experience. That was it for now, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know what you thought about the games I decided to include this week in the comment section down below this video. We can also discuss what sort of games you're playing right now, or if there are any games that you're looking forward to. I would love to discuss all that good stuff in the comment section, because then, until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around. Old school inspired boxing, boxing, a boxing game. <laughs> Although Hero Factory, fa Factory, Hero Factory, and yet, uh, yet at least, ah shit, because Price Fighters 2 released relatively recently, and it, and it, it is, it is, it is this, it is, yes, it is. <laughs>